week explore what sound is. I mean, we don't really think about it very often. I'm talking right now. And how does that work? How are you able to hear it? I mean, we know we can hear it through our ears. We know sound comes out when we talk. We know if I blow into this tuba, we're going to get a sound. But why does it work like that? And how do we hear? Well, why don't we take a look at a video really quick and learn a little bit more. Shh. Cover your eyes for a moment and just listen. What do you hear? I hear my chemistry set bubbling and squeaks. Is that you? Sounds are all around us all the time. There are so many of them, and we call sounds by a lot of different names. Like if a sound is really loud and kind of unpleasant, like when there's a lot of traffic going by, we sometimes call it noise. And if a sound is made by an instrument like a piano or a ukulele, we call it a note. And we call lots of notes together music. And some words are kind of like the sounds themselves. Like when fireworks go boom, popcorn pops, and bells go ding-a-ling. It doesn't matter what makes a sound though. All sounds are made the same way, through vibrations. When something vibrates, it moves back and forth really fast. So fast, in fact, that our eyes often can't see it moving. But other parts of our body can sense vibrations. And I bet you know what parts those are. That's right, our ears. So how does sound get from, say, a bell to our ears? The air all around us is made of tiny particles, and these particles are what carry sound. We can use marbles to demonstrate the teeny tiny particles that make up the air. Let's see how. If we put a few marbles together so they're touching, then roll another marble so that it crashes into them, the group of marbles will move. That's kind of what happens with sound. When we ring a bell, we cause the metal that makes up the bell to vibrate really fast back and forth and the vibration of the bell also shakes up the particles that make up the air around it and makes them vibrate. Then those particles run into the air particles next to them and so on. You can also think about it like dominoes with the vibration getting passed along from one bunch of particles in the air to the next. We call this path of vibration a wave. Now, how do we hear those vibrations? If we could look deep inside our ears, we'd see a special little part that kind of looks like the top of a drum. When sound waves make it all way to and into our ears, they make this part of our ear vibrate. The vibrations keep going, moving even deeper into our ear until they finally get to the spot that sends a message to our brain. And that message says, hey, we're hearing something. Now, who's ready to make some vibrations? We can make a kind of musical instrument that will help us to see the vibrations that we make. All we need is an empty can, like a coffee can, and a rubber band that's just big enough to stretch around the can from its top to its bottom. Stretch the rubber band over the top of the coffee can, and ta-da, we have an instrument, one that's kind of like a guitar. Let's pluck the rubber band gently. Does it make a sound? It sure does. And if we look very, very closely, we can see that the rubber band is moving back and forth. When we pull on the rubber band and let it go, we're causing it to vibrate. These vibrations travel into the air, making the air particles move through the air to our ears in a sound wave. If we pull kind of gently, the sound is kind of soft. But if we pull a little harder, the sound gets louder. And if we grab the rubber band while it's moving and stop it from vibrating, we also stop the sound. Hey, we made some pretty good vibrations. So whenever you hear a sound, you know that something, somewhere, is vibrating. And those vibrations are traveling through the air and into your ears. So thanks to all of you who asked us how sound works. And make sure to check back every week to learn more science with Squeaks and me. And we'll see you next time. Welcome back. We learned that noise, music, all sound comes from vibrations. So that must mean all these instruments that we've learned on before must be uh, caused by vibrations as well. Let's take a look. I'm going to play this tuba again. Now, believe it or not, you can't see through this mouthpiece. But if you could, 
you could see that my lips are vibrating. This is what they look like underneath the mouthpiece. It's going to sound kind of silly. My lips are vibrating. Just like how if we're tired out, you might go, oh man, that was a tough day today. That's what's happening. My lips are vibrating into this mouthpiece. And you can see it goes through a pipe and it goes, <laughs> wraps around and around and around and around and finally comes out here in this bell. But first off, the most important part is this mouthpiece. If we take a look, all it is is uh, just a cup with a hole. So when I vibrate my lips, it sounds like this. Which again sounds funny, right? It doesn't work until you add a lot of pipe. So I'm going to add all this. And now it sounds like an instrument. I'll play what I was playing earlier. And uh, why don't we find out why it sounds so much more different from this to what the tuba sounds like. Well, let's take so Why don't we take a look? We start here, we vibrate our lips and blow into it, and it comes in and follows the pipe down. And it goes into these valve casings. And this looks very complicated, but basically what happens, if, if they're up, it goes straight through. It kind of skips all this extra stuff. Comes out here, goes up and around, comes down here, and wraps around, around and then out the bell. Now what these uh, extra valves do right here, if I push, say, this one down, instead of skipping right through, it comes and adds extra pipe and makes it longer. So remember, the longer it is, the more, uh, the longer it is, the lower it gets. Same here. If I push this down, it adds this much right here. If I push this down, it adds this much. So each valve pushed down adds a more pipe and makes the overall instrument longer and longer. Let's look at a simpler version of this. Here's another brass instrument. You'll notice it has a mouthpiece. This is a trombone. It's a slightly smaller mouthpiece, but instead of having valves, so we push down and makes this um, uh, instrument longer, it just has a slide where I can make it physically longer too. And watch what happens as I make it longer. It will get lower. Listen. It's because the longer the pipe for the instrument, the longer, the lower it gets. And that's why generally smaller instruments are higher. Here's my trumpet. This is actually a cornet. Cornet's like a little more compact trumpet, but it sounds the same. It's the same thing, it has valves. So if I push down this particular one, we buzz. Actually for this, since it's such a small mouthpiece, it looks more like this. Very tight. Comes in, goes through here, and it enters the valves. If I don't push anything down, it comes straight out on this side. That's the shortest the trumpet can be, or the cornet can be. If I add this, you can see it comes out right there, adds that much pipe. Same for here, adds that much pipe right here. If I push down the third, it adds that much pipe. And that's why as I add more fingers, it gets lower and lower. I just make this trumpet longer and longer. Why don't we take a look at a woodwind? This is our clarinet, you'll remember. And remember, if I blow into it, this time I'm not vibrating my lips. So what's making the vibration? It's the reed. The reed is what makes it vibrate. If you look inside, aha, you can see all the way down the clarinet. There's a little hole right here in between the reed and the mouthpiece. And when my lip goes here and my teeth go here, I'm making a hole just like or when I vibrate my lips. You need a small hole for something to vibrate. And the thing that vibrates is not this plastic for the mouthpiece, but the reed. Just like how my lips vibrate 
the reed is going to vibrate. You just can't see it because it's inside. If I took off the reed, we'd have no sound. And how do I make the instrument lower? Well, I make, again, the pipe longer. Watch, I'm going to add fingers because there's holes right here. We call them tone holes. I'm going to make the pipe longer and longer and longer. Woodwinds do not have any wood on them. This is our flute. It's made out of metal. All well, it has is a hole. So what's causing the vibration? Well, this is kind of a strange one. It's almost like blowing over a bottle. I'm going to borrow a bottle really quick that I have that I'm going to use later in this lesson. But if you take a look, this bottle just open hole, but it can make a sound by blowing over it. That's because it's the same on a flute. When the air splits, I'm gonna blow over this hole right here and half the will go off the top, half will go inside, and that vibration of splitting the air makes the sound. And you need a nice big long tube again because as I add fingers and go down and make it lower, and close the holes. It gets lower and lower. Let me grab a string instrument. When I play this, what's making the noise, or sorry, what's making the vibration to make the sound? And if you said, the strings you'd be correct if I could slow this way down you could see the vibration of the string a little bit lower or a little bit better so the vibration of the string being plucked is what makes the noise the string vibrates and we have this nice open body it amplifies the sound just like how you know on our tuba right here has this big long pipe and it slowly makes it louder and louder and louder. Same with this, that's why it's hollow. And that's why if you have an electric guitar at home, you try and pluck the strings and it's really quiet because it doesn't have this hollow body on the inside to make it louder, just like that. Now, the same on the strings. If I make it shorter, remember the short instruments are the really, really high ones like the flute. It's our, one of our short ones. so. It's a high instrument, whereas the tuba was our lowest, our bass instrument, because it's so big and so long. As I make the string smaller, it's going to get higher and higher. Because that's all I'm doing right now, right? Instead of being the full length all the way up to here, I'm going to make it this length. I'm going to make it a little shorter. 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 The shorter the string gets, the higher it gets. I can also do one more thing. I can tighten the string. See if you can hear it get uh, even higher as I tighten it up. I'm making the string tighter. And if I loosen it up, it's going to go down. So the tighter the string is, the higher it gets. And the higher, sorry, the shorter I make it, the higher it gets as well. Why don't we look at some percussion instruments as well? We've got our biggest drum here, the bass drum. And you'll guess, just like the tuba, it's very big, which means it's probably going to be pretty low, right? Let's take a look. And it is. It's our lowest drum. Sorry, we make the noise by hitting the skin. If you look close, it's not real skin. Drums used to be made of real animal skin, but not so much anymore. Instead, it's fake skin. It's meant to simulate it. Now, if I hit it, I get the skin vibrating, and it's going to keep vibrating. Why don't we take a close look? You may, may be able to see it vibrating here.
But as we get the skin vibrating, you can hear it keeps going and going. But what happens if I stop the vibrations? Sound's done. There's no more vibrating, therefore there's no more sound. And why is it so loud? Well, inside is nothing. It's hollow. We have a skin on the other side. So that means, again, we have this big old hollow uh, instrument, which lets it uh, really get loud on the inside. Bass drum, vibrating because we hit it like a percussion instrument. Well, what about our snare drum here? If I turn on the snares here, we'll actually get the snare drum sound. Well, it doesn't stay vibrating for very long, does it? That's because the skin is stretched really tight. That's why it's so high. It does not sound low like the bass drum. This one is a high one. And we do the same thing. We hit the top and it gets the skin vibrating, which makes the sound. You won't be able to see it because it's stretched so tight. You can trust me, same thing. There's nothing on the inside of this. It's just another skin on the other side. Hit it, and there's our sound. And lastly, we can take a look at our marimba here, which we strike it with a mallet. I wonder if you guys can see the vibration as I hit it. All right, I'm going to hit the lowest note. Can you see it? The, vib the, the vibration produces the tone, and the sound travels down here and gets amplified. But it's not just instruments that we can take a look at. We can also look at, I mean, just these everyday things you might find at home. We can see these bottles here. We have a bottle that's nearly full of water right there. One I haven't finished, and... Uh, I don't know if I can take any more soda, guys, so I just left it there since we needed the halfway one and an empty bottle. So why don't we start there? Let's take a look. I'm going to play them like I would a flute. Here's our empty one. This has no water in it. It sounds like this. Why don't we skip straight over to the one this is almost full of water, if I pour it even a little bit out. Uh, it's near the top. So full, and this is empty. And just like a flute, I'm blowing air over, and some comes off the top, and some goes down in the bottle, and when the air splits, that's our sound that happens. That's the vibration that makes the glass, the whole glass, start to vibrate. And as you can see, the more water there is in it, the higher the sound is. And if we look at the one in the middle where I didn't quite finish it, it's got about that much water, or sorry, soda left. So, and finally. And uh, why don't we take a look at these glasses right here. I'm going to take another tour. We have a glass that's nearly full, all the way down here. We have a glass that's a little, you know, a little bit more than half. And then one that's nearly empty. Now, I can't blow over these. That just simply will not work. But instead, you've probably seen people do this before. I'm getting my finger a little bit wet. I'm going to get these glasses vibrating. Can you hear it? All I'm doing is when I'm rubbing the top of the glass, it's getting the glass vibrating. Let's try the middle one. And it has less water. Can you hear the difference? And finally, I tuned it like a major chord that we learned in our last Halloween episode. A happy one. If I could play all three at once, we could hear the major chord. But since I'm just one person, can't do that. But I do want to get a little closer and see if you can't see the water vibrate a little bit. May not show up on the camera. If it doesn't show up here, we'll get extra close. 
bet you can see it a little bit. I'm gonna take the camera and see if I can't get even. All right, here we go. Let's see if you can see it. I'm gonna get my finger a little bit wet. Ah, do you see it? Uh, we can physically see the vibrations. Pretty cool. I got Mr. Zacherson here to help me make the major chord that I promised. I don't have three hands, so I'm going to get some help. Here we go. ensemble of wine glass players next playing the Pirates of the Caribbean theme. That's all well and good. That's how the instruments make vibrations. That's how glass bottles and things around the house make uh, vibrations. But how does our voice work? I mean, it just seems like we're pushing air out of our lungs and suddenly we're talking. So how does that even work? Well, to see it, we have to see our vocal folds, which are inside our throat. So in order to see those, I would have to take this camera and eat it. And you can go down the throat and see it. But I'm going to draw a basic person. So I want you to imagine I grabbed the camera, I ate it, it's going down my throat, and our throat is a circle. It's going down the throat, somewhere around here there's our vocal folds. And the folds are just flaps of skin that can close or open, so basically it goes down the middle, and these can close and open to make different sounds. And you know what? It works a lot like a balloon. Believe it or not, check it out. Here's our throat. And our vocal folds can open and close to make different sounds. So, and if these are our lungs, we can blow up our lungs. And again, this is gonna sound silly. It doesn't sound like our voice, but this is basically how it works. So, I have our vocal uh, folds closed right now as I open them up. See those vocal folds? You saw them a second ago. They're vibrating. You can see the vibration, right? If I let it all out at once. That's if our vocal folds were completely open. But just as one more time, 
Here's our throat and our vocal folds are currently closed because I'm letting no air out. And I can't get that perfect angle that I did earlier. There we go. It's currently closed, but as I open it up, it makes vibrations. And that's kind of how our vocal folds work. They can open and close and they vibrate and that's what makes our voice and that's how singers sing and that's how we make all of our noises with our throat and our vocal cords. That's how we talk, that's how we sing, that's how we get it done. It's fascinating. Lastly, I want to leave you guys with what, a visual of what sound kind of looks like in sound waves. Because we can't see any of it, right? So it's hard to visualize. Remember when we were watching that one video where we have the sound, it hits particles, and they move and hit the next particle and the next one, and it goes out in a wave. So it's like a bunch of teeny tiny little specks that we can't see all bumping into each other, and that's what creates the vibration. It's all a vibration, and it just transfers it to the next particle. So the first one gets hit with the sound vibration, and it just moves to the next one, the next one, the next one. So I want you to imagine right in the middle, we have somebody that's about to clap. And that creates a sound wave. Here's my clap. It makes all the particles run into each other and vibrate um, coming out from the clap. So that's going to kind of happen right here. I'm going to move all these or dominoes as if a clap knocked them over. And they're little particles that you cannot see in the air. So let's try it. I want you to imagine that somebody just clapped. One, two, three, clap. And it moves outward. And it just keeps going in a sound wave. That's where we get that term from. So if you can imagine, you go out into space. In space, there are no particles and there are no air particles. So that's why if you've ever seen a movie when they're in space and there's no sound, that's why. If you even tried to make a sound, there's nothing there. It's a vacuum. No particles for your vibration inside your vocal folds to bounce off of. So there's nothing can't make any sounds in space because of that. Why don't we move on one last video where we can do our best, or these people in the video do their best to show you what sound can look like. Let's take a look. The film you are about to see has no characters, If you spare a little of your imagination, it is a film to describe to you the effect of cymatic frequencies on matter.